What's up boys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing another five year rebuild. This time we're doing the Florida State Seminoles. This one is not gonna be versus anybody else, it's just gonna be a rebuild by myself to see if we can bring Florida State back to relevance in the college football world. There's still a five star program, so it's gonna be a lot easier than the Vanderbilt one. This means we're gonna be able to get some much better recruits than the Vandy one and they are already a 84 overall team. I think Vanderbilt was like a 78 or nine. So let's hop right into it, see if we can get some good recruits. Checking out this team's depth chart in the quarterback room, starting is redshirt sophomore Jordan Travis, who is a 76 overall. With 86 speed, he's not gonna be the quarterback of the future because he does not have that much time left, but we do have two freshmen in Chuba. Purdy, he is a 73 overall freshman with 91 speed. Very, very interesting. And also Tate Roadmaker, who is also a freshman and a 71 overall. Let's look at their throwing stats. And Chuba, or Chuba, I'm not, I'm not sure how you want to say that. I'm just probably just going to call him Purdy. He has 85 throw power and 74 accuracy, where Tate has 81 and 76. So... Purdy is definitely the better player right now, and he's probably going to be our quarterback in the future seasons. In the backfield, we have three very promising freshmen in Lawrence, Toa, Phil, Philly, Phil, why do they keep giving me hard names? Jaki Douglas and Corey Wren, who are all freshmen, all look very good, although Wren only has 81 speed, but I'm definitely going to redshirt all three of these guys. Got a few freshman wide receivers in Robinson, uh, Kentron Poiter, and Darian Williamson, who all looks very solid. Starting our season one recruiting, we have some excellent looking players right here. Got 178 overall, Seth Williams, Andre Lewis, Matt Crowell, who is a punter, but still Ryan Hall, Mark Price, not the basketball player. Got a few athletes like Paris Koch, who's 75, Adam Chambers, Justin James, whole bunch of good recruits here. A few weeks in and we are doing very good on these recruits. We have a big lead on Seth Williams, Andre Lewis, Matt Crowell, Ryan Hall, uh, a little bit of a lead on Mark Price, but all the top ones we are leading big time on. Hopefully we will get them very soon. We are going to end up getting Ryan Hall, the stud defensive end, to commit also Seth Williams at a 78 overall, and we also get the athlete Mark Price, who is a 76 overall. Looks like he's going to be a really, really good wide receiver with 92 speed, 76 route running, and 71 catching. End of the regular season, we end up going 5-7, and seven, which is pretty realistic because I think they went like 3-6, and six, something like that in real life this year. We got blown out by Louisville, lost by 10 to Clemson, which is pretty good. Lost to NC State. Lost to Miami, who is number four and undefeated somehow. Got whooped by Wake Forest. Lost to Syracuse, who is four and eight by two scores. And lost to Florida, who is our rivals, 35 to 24. Jordan Travis had an absolutely horrible year. 2,100 yards, 15 touchdowns, 19 interceptions, 40% completion percentage. 40. How is that even possible? And he was sacked 26 times, which is pretty bad as well. Deshaun Corbin had 760 yards and 10 touchdowns. Solid year. He's also injured right now. LaDamian Webb, who actually went to a high school near mine, got 700 yards and three touchdowns. He had a good year as well. And our leading receiver was Keyshawn Helton, who was a junior. He had 760 yards and five touchdowns. Off-season recruiting, we have two recruits that have not committed to the team yet. Guard Scott Hooper and athlete Andre Lewis, who is probably going to play either receiver or quarterback for us. We have a pretty good lead on both of them, 1,500 for Lewis and 1,200 for Hooper, so I'm probably going to put about half and half into each recruit. And we are going to get both of these players. And ladies and gentlemen, we have signed the number one class in the country. I honestly didn't think it was going to be that good. I knew it was like at least top 15 top 10 but number one in the country i had no idea we only got one five star but we did end up getting four 12 star recruits which is amazing somehow we were even better than notre dame who got five five stars but they only got five four stars so i mean we just had an amazing recruiting class and this should really help us win in the next few years Looking at the training results going into season number two, it's a pretty decent roster, not great, but we do have four 90 overalls in Jashawn Corbin, 
Bavion Johnson, Dante Lucas, and Devonte Love Taylor, and a bunch of high 80s as well. So I'm hoping we can at least make a bowl game in season two and also obviously get some good recruits. In our preseason recruiting, we have multiple high 70 overalls on our board, such as Marcus Weber, Ryan Warren, Andy Mullins, Brooke Taylor, Garrett Hill, and Adam Whitaker. In the preseason polls, we are ranked all the way down at number 63. We are an 88 overall team with an 88 offense and a 90 defense. Somehow we're ranked right below Kent State, which is a 75 overall, so that's kind of disrespectful. Hopefully we can prove them wrong and at least make a bowl game this year, maybe win six or seven games and make some progress. We did improve from season one to season two. We ended up going seven and five, and we are going to make a bowl game. We beat Oklahoma State pretty good, who finished three and eight, though. Lost to North Carolina. Beat Wake Forest, Maryland. Miami, who's number five, actually, is nine and three. That's a good win. Lost to NC State by 12. Beat Louisville, Kent State. Lost to number 10, Clemson, by a touchdown. Lost to Boston College by a touchdown, who's five and seven. That's disappointing. Beat Syracuse and lost to 11-1, third in the country, Florida, by two points. That is a heartbreaking one. Jordan Travis had a much better year. He had 3,200 yards, 32 touchdowns, but he still had 16 interceptions, which is pretty bad. That's more than one a game. Hopefully he can get that down next year in his senior year. He also only had 56% completion percentage, which is pretty bad as well. Ja'Shawn Corbin had a great year, 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. He's going to be a beast next year if he doesn't leave this offseason. And also Toya of, uh, Lawrence had almost 608 touchdowns. And receiving Warren Thompson, the junior, had almost 1,500 yards with 19 touchdowns, which is insane. And defensively, Emmett Rice led some tackles with 63, and Hall led us with 19 tackles for loss, and he also led us in sacks with six and a half. We're going to be playing in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl against Texas A&M, who is also 7-5 and five and 4-4 four and four in their conference, so a pretty good bowl game, especially with the record that we had. And we lose by a point in the Gator Bowl to the Aggies, of course. Thompson breaks the record for receiving touchdowns in a season recently set by Kelvin Benjamin back in 2013. We didn't end up getting the top class again this year, but we still do get a top 10 class at number 8. We signed one 5 star, 5 4 stars, 12 3 stars, and 4 2 stars. So no, it wasn't quite as good as last year's, but it's still an amazing recruiting class that should help us win. Going into Season 3, the top player on the team is running back Deshaun Corbin at a 96 overall. He should be a beast this year with that 94 speed. And we have guard Dante Lucas at a 95, Renardo Green 93 overall free safety, Amari Gaynor 91 overall outside linebacker, and Jordan Travis, the senior quarterback, he's also at a 90 with Lovett, Jones, and Smith. That is going to be eight players at a 90 overall or above. So a pretty good team. Hopefully we can win. I'm going to go and say like nine games this year. In our final season of recruiting, because I'm not going to recruit in the last two seasons because it's pointless, I have found one of the greatest recruits I think I've ever seen, at least wide receiver wise. This man is six foot six, 211 pounds. He's an 82 overall. He has 89 speed. 86 route running and 81 catching it is just insane he also has 73 man cover 78 zone coverage and is even a decent tackler so he could play both sides of the ball and i wish that i was actually playing games in this dynasty if i got him because he would be so much fun to play with but of course jason montgomery is not the only great recruit we have on the board this year chad quinn is an 82 overall running back adam price an 81 overall athlete looks like a great wide receiver as well Another athlete in Kevin Barnes, he looks like he'd be a great quarterback, but also a good receiver. We already have a quarterback. And you also have people like defensive end Matt Thomas, wide receiver Kyle Tate. We're going to be loaded at receiver if we can get all these guys. Only have 12 on the board because most of the team is already done. We just need to get some depth and just get some really good players if we have some injuries. In the preseason polls, we're ranked at number 49 in the country. We are 93s across the board in overall offense and defense. We went 7-6 and six last year, so the goal is probably win 10 games, at least 9 or 10. And hopefully we can beat Florida for the first time as well. I'll see you guys at the end of this season. We end up going 7-5 and five at the end of the regular season. Our losses were to number 3, North Carolina, number 5, Maryland, at Louisville, who was 5-7, and seven, 
at Clemson who went 6 and 6 and in overtime to number 1 Florida who of course is also our in-state rival so that is a big disappointment but shockingly we actually won our division and are in the conference championship as you can see by the conference standings right here we were atop the division with a 7 and 5 record above Wake Forest who was somehow number 2 with a 5 and 7 record and NC State who we beat had a 9-3 record, but they were 5-3 in the conference. So we actually have a rematch against North Carolina, who is still number 3 in the country, and they are 11-1. Probably not going to beat them, but maybe by some miracle we can. And by some miracle, we end up beating them in the ACC Championship, 34-27. to So in our third year, we end up winning the ACC, our conference championship. And we're going to a New Year's Six Bowl. We're going to be playing in the Capital One Orange Bowl against the UCLA Bruins. They are 11-2, number 13 overall. We are 8-5. We are not ranked, though. It's going to be a tough ball game, but hopefully we can pull it out. But sadly, we are going to end up losing the Orange Bowl by a score of 20-17. to So close. Stats on the season, Jordan Travis in his senior season had a great year. He had about 3,400 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. The senior running back, Jay Sean Corbin, almost broke 1,000 yards, just barely off of it. He also had 11 touchdowns, so pretty good senior season for him. And also, the other running back, Lawrence, got 900 yards and 7 touchdowns, and Travis got 300 yards and 3 touchdowns. In the receiving department, the senior got 1,600 yards, 17 touchdowns for Jordan Young, what a year for him. Absolutely amazing. If wide receivers could actually win the Heisman in this game, he probably would have won it. He deserved it. Amari Gaynor led us in tackles with 81. Ryan Hall led us in tackles for loss with 24. And Fuller had 22. And Ryan Hall also led us in sacks with 7.5. And, and Fuller had 4.5. We signed the number 8 class in the nation, another top 10 class, staggering 6 5-star recruits and 3 4-star recruits. Still wasn't quite as good as our first class that we had that was number 1 overall, but still amazing. Going into the fourth season, we have 10 players that are 90 overall or above. I do believe that is the most we've had so far, so hopefully we can capitalize on all these good players that we have and have a good year. In the preseason polls, we are ranked at number 32 in the country with a 95 overall team, a 93 offense, and a 99 overall defense. We better be stopping some offenses this year. And of course, Florida State disappoints and goes 7-5 again. We lost to 5-7 Virginia Tech. Maryland, we got whooped by them. Number 11, MC State, we got whooped by them. Lost by 7 to Mississippi State. And of course, we lost to Florida, who is 6-6 six six somehow this year. And we got absolutely obliterated by them as well. Looks like Andre Lewis actually got injured during the year, but when he was playing, he played okay. He had 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, and some four picks. And Chubba Purdy had about 700 yards, eight touchdowns, and five picks. So not great for either one. Lawrence had over 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. Our leading receiver had 600 yards, which is not impressive at all. We did not have a lot of passing yards. McCluster led us in tackles with 91. Chambers had 17 tackles for loss and five and a half sacks. For our bowl game, we're gonna be playing in the Holiday Bowl against eight and four Washington State, who is the number 21 team in the country. So a much worse bowl than last year, very disappointing. But we are gonna end up winning the bowl game 24 to 21, a very close game, but at least we won nine games for the first time in this video. Going into our fifth and final season of this rebuild, we have a staggering 15 players of 90 overall or higher. I think that's like four or five more than last year. And also look at this wide receiver core, 96, 92, 90, 86, 86, 83, 83, just incredible. In the preseason, we're ranked at number 28, but we have finally built a 99 overall team, even though our defense is only 97, our offense is stacked at 99. If Florida State screws this up and does not win at least 10 games this year, I'm going to be so done with them. I'm over this team. It's not as bad as the Vanderbilt rebuilt was, but it's getting on my nerves. That's what I'm talking about. Look at Florida State. 12-0, and 0, number one in the country in the conference championship against number six, Miami. We had a lot of close games this year. I mean, we beat five and seven two five and seven teams by three points a piece south carolina 59 to 57 in overtime that was wild but the rest of them we pretty much dominated i mean we were amazing this year 
Andre Lewis had a great year, 3,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, 6 picks. A sophomore, Chad Quinn, had 1,300 yards and 17 touchdowns. He was a stud. Our quarterback also had 900 yards and 5 touchdowns. He deserves the Heisman. Adam Price, the sophomore, had 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns. Robinson had 606. McCluster led us in tackles once again with 81. Both Chambers and Hall had 20 tackles for loss, and they both had 5.5 sacks. Mullins had 6.5, and, and Griffiths had eight and andre lewis is at the top of the heisman watch he really deserves it he has played phenomenal this year i mean look at the game against florida he had 163 rushing yards and a touchdown all right this is big if we can beat miami in the conference championship we will be in the national championship i'm not sure who against yet i haven't looked but we got to win this game and in florida state fashion we choke it away and lose 45 to 52 to Miami. I don't think we're going to be in the national championship now, but it's still going to be a great year either way. We're going to make a very good bowl game. And Sally Lewis does not win the Heisman. He actually came in third. Still very good year for him. Very proud of our quarterback. We are going to go back to the Orange Bowl, though. We're going to be playing number five Alabama, who is actually nine and three. That seems a little high of a ranking for a three loss team, considering we're number four and we're 12 and one. But either way, we're playing in a great ball game against a good team. And we are going to beat Alabama 45-35. to That is going to be a great 13-1 season to end the rebuild. So in our five years of this rebuild, we went 41-25 and collectively. Started off terribly with a 5-7 and season. Then we consistently got a little bit better. 7-6, 8-6, 8-5. And, and, and then we jumped all the way up to 13-1 and, and just missed out on a national championship appearance. Not to mention, we got the number one overall recruiting class in our first year, and we built a 99 overall team. We won two conference championships and won a New Year's Six Bowl in our last year. So even though we didn't win a national championship overall, I would call this rebuild a success. I would give this rebuild a four stolen crab legs out of five. That is going to do it for the rebuild today. I'm kind of wanting to make this a weekly thing if you guys are going to support it. Maybe like upload it on the weekends, maybe Sunday. I'm probably going to put this up on Sunday. And last week's was also up on Sunday, the Vanderbilt one. If you haven't seen that, make sure to go check it out. Let me guys know if you enjoy these and I'll make sure to keep doing them. I am enjoying making them. Make sure to support the video, like it, sub to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I can tell you now I've been feeling fine. Focused on the grind, yeah. Everybody gonna come and go, yeah. Happens all the time. No more playing these games, no more playing these games. Look how far we all came.